Sports fans and baseball fans and, hey, out-of-the-park baseball fans. We are here with another in my series of 1980 Pittsburgh Pirates games. And uh, today we are going to be taking on the Chicago Cubs. And starting for the Cubs is going to be Lynn McLaughlin, who comes into this game 6-6 six and six with a 355 earned run average. And the starter for our Pittsburgh Pirates is going to be the Rick Roden. And he is 5-8 and eight with a 477 earned run average. Not having one of the better game or better seasons that you would expect from the 1980 Rick Roden. But let's see if he can win this particular game. Um, if we take a look at the standings before we get started here. We can see that our Pirates are 36 and 39, eight and a half games out. But we are better than the Chicago Cubs. They're 29 and 44 and 14 and a half out. The Expos are now leading the division. It isn't the Mets anymore. So reality is kind of setting in for this 1980 Mets team that is still playing way better than it actually should. And the Pittsburgh Pirates are a little behind where they should be. I think they finished, again, I think they finished the 1980 season, uh, 80 and 82. So we're kind of in the ballpark of where we should be, but, you know, not quite. So uh, we're, you know, we could use a win here. We could use a sweep of the Cubs. Uh, if we look at the schedule, we can see that, this is the first game of the series against the Cubs, and we have a four-game series, and we'll have a day off, and then it'll be the All-Star break, and then we will resume our schedule by playing two against the Mets and three against the Phillies. So, without any further delay, let's get on with this game. We'll take a look at the lineups. And we can see that Johnson is getting tired, so I am going to actually take Cliff Johnson out of the lineup. And we are going to uh, put Tony Pena in for him. Since, as I say, he is apparently getting tired. Uh, everything else looks pretty good. Roden ready to start, so let's get on with the game. And so you see you got Rick Roden out there pitching. Um, so we're underway here. And Chicago Cubs, surprisingly, it looks like they have taken five of five from us so far, which is really kind of a shocker. So there's one down, and that brings up Fritzy Connolly, the second batter for the Cubs. I do not remember Fritzy Con Connolly. If anybody out there does, well, he just got struck out. If anyone does, let me know. And there's Billy Buckner, Billy Buck. Uh, Billy Buckner, quite famous and actually quite good. He was a he was a very good player, but you know he gets known for that error that he made in the 1986 World Series, which is a shame. Lynn McLaughlin is pitching to Omar Moreno. And Omar Moreno actually doing quite well in the air, but he flies out there. That brings up uh, Bill Madlock, who is hitting 268 for us um, with a 702 OPS. And he looks like he's going to fly out to center as well. So there's two down quickly for the Pirates, and that brings up Mike Easler, who is hitting an astounding 346 with a 415 on base percentage and a 979 OPS. And he strikes out, I guess, so 
Here we go. Tie game, top of the second. Uh, Roden out there again. Now he's pitching to Carl Pagel. I don't remember Carl Pagel either. No wonder this guy, and he's really, he's whiffing people left and right, too. Jim Tracy, I remember not as a player, but as a manager. And he's going to be on with, it uh, looks like an infield base hit. And I am not going to watch him. Dan Roan is up, the shortstop, and I don't remember Dan Roan either. Looks like Moreno made a great play there. And so there's two down, and up steps Jerry Martin, the right fielder. I do remember Jerry Martin, and he gets a hit. So the Cubs have runners at first and second with two down. And none other than Tim Blackwell, the catcher. Not a good hitter as I remember. Not really even a good catcher. So he was thrown out, and the Cubs go down. Uh, they do get two men on, but they don't uh, score. And now McLaughlin will face Ken Phelps. Good morning, Mr. Phelps. And Mr. Phelps is going to fly out to center deep, probably, looks like. Everybody's flying out to center. Lee Lacey is up. He's hitting 362. This is unreal. Lee Lacey hitting 362 with a 400 on base. I mean, with some of these, the way some of these guys are playing, it's surprising I'm under 500. Um, Phil Garner up with two down. Scrap iron, and he's out. Strikes out. So McLaughlin and Roden are in a pitcher's duel here going to the top of the third inning. And, uh, and uh, Roden's going to be facing McLaughlin. And he walks McLaughlin. Not a really good idea. I mean, I know that there's been some ideas in the history of the world, but that's probably one of the worst ones. Two strikes on the batter. And he, they throw out McLaughlin, which is great. So the bunt didn't work. The sacrifice did not work. As Mako is now aboard at first. Again, I don't know who Mako is. And uh, Fritzy. Fritzy Connolly is going to fly out to center. Did they double him off? No, they didn't. So, Mako is still at first base. Buckner up. There's only like two guys in this lineup that I even remember, and one of them I remember as a manager. All right, so the Cubs go down quickly. And uh, we go to the bottom of the third... Trying to get a run. Tony Pena is up for us. Playing in place of Cliff Johnson, who is starting to get dog because he's played too much in a row. That brings up Timmy Foley, the shortstop. And he's going to fly to center. For We've got like the 40th batter that's fly, flied out to center. And uh, Rick Roden. At least he comes up in a non-critical situation. And uh, he's out. So uh, we are going to the top of the fourth in a scoreless tie. Roden and McLaughlin pitching, both pitching their butts off. And Carl Pagel, the first baseman, is up. That's going to be a little inside. And he walks him. One on, no outs. And that's going to be a pop-out to really kind of a soft line drive to second base. Dan Roan is up with a man at first. And now one out. And that's going to be a double play. Love it. So we pull a double play off. And we're going to the bottom of the fourth. Still in a 0-0 game with the crappy Cubs. McLaughlin going up against Omar Moreno. Moreno flying to center. For the second time, I believe. Brings up Bill Madlock. Mad Dog. And he is going to fly out to left. And up steps Mike Easler. And he is out. He strikes out. So the pitcher duel continues between Roden and McLaughlin. 
as Roden faces Jerry Martin. Jerry Martin, he is one of the players I do remember. And he is speedy, but they got him. Brings up Tim Blackwell. They walk Tim Blackwell. Not a real good idea, although McLaughlin is the next batter. And I always like it when they sacrifice. Let him sacrifice unless the batter's safe, and he wasn't. So now they've got a runner at second and two down. And uh, Steve Macko has to try to knock in the man at second. And he will not do it. Pop out to the shortstop, Tim Foley. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. 0-0. Zero, zero. Ken Phelps up. Ken Phelps looks like he's going to fly to center. No error on that play, unfortunately. Brings up uh, Lee Lacey. Lee Lacey's going to get a hit. That might be our first hit. I think that's probably our first hit. Lee Lacey aboard with one down and Phil Garner up. Scrap Iron. And Scrap Iron's going to get a base hit. And, yeah, there's an error by the center fielder. So we got runners at second and third with one out. And Tony Pena up. You got to wonder if I should have the bullpen going, but I'm not going to. And Tony Pena strikes out. And that brings up Tim Foley. They're going to walk Tim Foley and pitch to Roden. How did I know? Well, did they walk him? No, they struck him out. All right, no runs, top of the sixth. I probably should have pinch hit for Roden there because he is starting to hit his inning of weakness. Oh, my God, uh, Moreno misjudged the ball, so he's got a double. It's a good thing there's nobody that's really that good in this Cubs lineup except Buckner. And he is the guy that's up, but he's going to fly out to left. So there's one down, man at second. Carl Pagel up. Carl Pagel is going to hopefully fly out to center. That was deep enough, though, to move the runner to third. So now they've got a man 90 feet away with two down and Jim Tracy, the batter. And he gets out. Um, Ken Phelps will retire him at first base. And we are still tied at zero with Moreno up. And Moreno, they pitched him inside, and he inside-outed it to left field. Bill Madlock. Bill Madlock is going to walk. So we got a man aboard. Mike Easler, good hitter. And he gets a hit. So we got a little, maybe, and I'm going to say no. Got a possible threat going here. Um, Ken Phelps. Good morning, Mr. Phelps. And Mr. Phelps is going to hit into a double play. So let's see how much gas Roden has in the tank. He's got a little bit. I mean, I think he can get through the seventh. Uh, yeah, there's a fly ball to right, and that's an out. Jerry Martin's up. Jerry Martin's going to pop out. Looks like the third base. So there's two down quickly. And Tim Blackwell is up. And Tim Blackwell looks like he's going to pop out to Phelps. And that retires the side. I will get somebody warming up now because... And we're going to make that be Grant now. We're going to make it be Eddie Solomon. Eddie Solomon's going to warm up. Because Roden is starting to get gassed. So we will let Lacey hit. Hopefully we can score a run. And that is going to be a base hit. It's going to be an infield hit. And Garner up with a man aboard. No outs. And that's going to be a... No! A great play by none other than Jim Tracy. So, uh, Tony Pena is up at the plate, one on, one out, and he is going to pop out, fly out to center, whatever you prefer. 
That brings up Tim Foley. Tim Foley is going to be safe. Nice. He beat it out. And that brings up Roden just in time so we can pinch hit for him. Uh, there's a righty on the mound, so I'm going to say Willie Stargell. Let's pinch hit Willie Stargell. And he is going to just pop out. So we don't get any runs. And we do have to make the replacement, so we'll put in Eddie Solomon. Pitching in the top of the eighth. And that is going to be a double. Ooh, Nelly. Double leadoff, double for the Cubs here in the top of the eighth. Mako is up. And that's going to be a base hit. They're going to probably score the man? No, they don't. I'm still going to play back because I hate playing the infield game. It's just all it is is get, you're inviting the other team to get a hit that they wouldn't normally get. That's going to be a deep fly, and it will score a run. Possibly it does. Runner moves to third. There's runners at the corners with one down. Solomon, I mean, all that work by Roden is going to be for nothing here, looks like. They got two runs on the board. This crappy lineup, I can't believe it got two runs. And we're not going to get the back end of the double play, doesn't look like. So, no. Runners at the corners, two down. Chicago with a 2 nothing lead. And that's going to be a fly out. Should end the inning. But the Cubs take a 2 nothing lead. And we're in the bottom of the eighth. Omar Moreno leading off. And he's going to ground out to first base quickly. None of our good hitters are really doing all that well. Bill Madlock, 0 for 2 this game. Moreno's like 0 for 3, I think. 0 for 3 or 0 for 4. That's going to be a fly out, so there's two down. And uh, Mike Easler up. So all my best hitters have already gone, and uh, we're not going to have a lot to look forward to in the ninth. Eddie Solomon out there again, trying to hold at least this 2-0 deficit. And there's a fly out to right, one down. Blackwell up. Maybe an out, yes. Moreno makes a great play. Nice diving catch by Moreno. And um, two down with nobody on, and they get a base hit. That brings up Steve Macko. Steve Macko is going to be out. No, it's an error. An error probably on Solomon. Yep. So runners are at first and second. Two down, though, luckily, with Connolly up. And that's going to be a fly ball to center field for the out. Now we need two runs right here or we lose this game. Ken Phelps is up. He walks. Nice start. I'll take it. Lee Lacey. Lee Lacey. Did he hit a home run? No. He flew out to left field. That brings up... They got Bill Caudill pitching right now. Well, that brings up Phil Agarner. Bill Garner is going to fly out to left. We're down to our last out. And that is unfortunately Tony Pena. But Tony Pena rips one into the stands, baby, and ties the game. No, well, it might be an inside the park home run. We'll see what it is. It isn't a home run. I'm pretty sure that's not a home run.
but the computer is like having a little brain part here. No, it's a stand-up double. I don't know what happened there. The outfielder's thrown it from beyond the wall. This is crazy. I've never see, seen something quite like that before. So really, it's only second and third. Nobody's even scored, and there's two down, and Tim Foley up. And that is not going to be deep enough. It's going to be a fly out to left, and we lose 2 nothing. Heartbreaking loss for the Pirates. So, you know, we can look at the box score here. We, uh, we only got six hits. Six for 32. Fifteen people left on base. Um, Lacey had a good day. He was two for four. Um, Foley had a, a pretty decent day. He was one for three with a walk. And Roden, of course, pitched valiantly only to hand it over to Solomon, who lost the game for us. So we will go back to the standings. Just one last look now at the standings where we are. 36 and 40. Still ahead of the Cardinals pretty comfortably and ahead of the Cubs who just beat us. So uh, we'll finish today and then we will see we will see you guys later. But for right now, that's it for me, Sportsman Z. Bob Zalke signing off.